Huh? Oh, the Spirit dwells for power. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The Spirit dwells for power. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this blessed day you have given unto us. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We are not ashamed of our past, for it has brought us closer to you, and we are grateful. Allison, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we are grateful to you for this blessed day. We celebrate your blessings. We celebrate the blessings you have given unto us to see this new day. Many are those who did not have the opportunity, but you have been good to us, and we thank you thanking you for the life of Allison. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us what we ought to know so that we can increase in every area of our lives as you have come to help us. We thank you. Angie, Angie, God bless you. Praise the Lord from, from India. God bless you. Please share this broadcast, okay? Let everyone know that there is a good a good word that is going on a good word all right that will bring you and i into the place of strength and authority and we give god praise for that in jesus name all right all right hey man of god damon fisher god bless you is it um um bishop elect you look like it praise the lord praise the lord all right Listen, I um, we've been dealing with Tina. God bless you, Tina. God bless you. We've been dealing about, um, or we've been talking about the importance of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer, every child of God. Importance of the Holy Spirit. It is so important for you to understand, beloved, that um, um, without the Holy Spirit operating in you man of god without the up without the holy spirit operating um you are a christian no problem with that priscilla god bless you all right you are a christian with no power you are a christian now you are a christian because you have accepted jesus christ as your lord and personal savior the holy spirit then empowers you all right so without the Holy Spirit, you are a Christian with no power. You are a Christian with no power. Now, have you thought about how many times issues were brought to the disciples of Jesus whilst they were with Jesus and um, uh, they couldn't do anything? They couldn't do anything. Why? Because they had not received the Holy Spirit at that time yet. You remember they received the Holy Spirit when Jesus had to depart. He told them for them to wait until the Holy Spirit has come before they go out there and uh, do the things of of the gospel or preach the gospel now you remember that Jesus was baptized and that the Holy Spirit descended upon him so he was full of the Holy Spirit and doing the things and doing the things that um, he was able to do that people were marveling are you listening people were marveled all right, Debbie, God bless you for coming on this platform. Please do me a favor, share this broadcast right now, okay? This is a live program, share it right now to all your friends and loved ones. So you realize that I'm talking about the fact that a Christian without the Holy Spirit, listen, the fact that you are a Christian does not mean you have the Holy Spirit. Don't get this thing twisted. The fact that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He's your master, yes. But you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need to have the Holy Spirit with you. Now, you remember that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is come. We see the evidence of that um, in the day of Pentecost. As Jesus told the disciples, all right, they were with him and Jesus told them, he says, you wait until the Holy Spirit is come upon you and then he will empower you then for you to do the things that I've sent you to do. All right. Debbie, God bless you, Debbie. All right, so you see the importance of the Holy Spirit. So as a believer, you need the Holy Spirit. Now, I also want to talk to you about the fact that you want to get closer to 
somebody or whoever is full of the Holy Spirit. We've been dealing last week about testing all spirits, the Bible says, so that you know that the person whom you are dealing with or you are, you are subjecting yourself with Kumari. God bless you. Praise the Lord from India. All right. The person you are subjecting or you submitting to in the, in the, in the, um, in the realms of the spirit or in the Christendom uh, is, a, is somebody who is filled with the Holy Spirit because there are all the spirits also operating okay on this on the face of this earth we went to see how um, Satan was cast down in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 and he came down with um, some of the angels okay who follow him and have become demons now these are these are fallen spirits and so there are other spirits also operating right now on the face of this earth and so scripture talked to you and I that we should test all spirits we should test all spirits and we saw that and, there, and it's very important and uh, that you know the spirit that is operating around you whether it's in your church whether it's in your home it's in your office in your business area your relationship and what have you your family and all that you must know the spirit that is operating in your domain and so it's very important for you also to know that the person whom you are submitting to as your shepherd or your pastor or whoever you know the spirit that is operating through them because what is in them will be transferred there's an impartation that takes place now you you are we are going to look at some scriptures that when the holy spirit has finally come upon the disciples now peter peter who didn't have the holy spirit before and now have to receive the Holy Spirit is somebody who is going out, who is going out in preaching and teaching, being invited to even raise the dead. Remember, he raised Dorcas and all that. Peter now in the time, I mean, Peter opens his mouth to talk, and people are receiving the Holy Spirit. So that is that is that is so powerful. That is very very powerful, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. That you must you must. You know be with somebody who is full of the holy spirit it will help you the reason i'm saying this because it will help you um and um put you in an environment that um, you'll be attracted to the holy spirit now we also even see as i mentioned the other day that this guy by the name of um, simon he was a sorcerer he was attracted to the holy spirit he was attracted to the holy spirit because when he saw the demonstration of the of the, the 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 power of the holy spirit because he understand power he wanted to he thought he could buy he, was, he thought it was something that they sell in the store that peter has gone to buy it, and therefore he was asking peter can i can i give you money to you know to get the holy spirit and uh, you know peter chastise him so it's very important you for you to understand that your your association or relationship um, has to do with somebody who is with the Holy Spirit. If you have not received the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it, it will help you. Are you listening? We're going to look at some scriptures here. Now, I'm, you, I'm going to use uh, Peter as a case study today. Peter as a case study today. Peter was not always uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit. All right, Kafo, Zachary, God bless you. Peter was not empowered always by the Holy Spirit. Peter received the Holy Spirit in the day of Pentecost, all right, among them for which he stood, okay, um, with all boldness and authority and spoke to the people of Jerusalem concerning that which was spoken by, uh, by the prophets, all right? Now, this was the same Peter who was scared uh, before and afraid and denied Jesus and, and ran away. Now, after the Holy Spirit has come upon him, because the Holy Spirit empowers, the Holy Spirit gives you authority. The Holy Spirit gives you a mandate for you to do the things that is of God. So it's very important, beloved, I cannot speak enough about the Holy Spirit. And why would you not even hear the message of the Holy Spirit and hear about the Holy Spirit? These days, I believe the churches are, you know, you, you, you are hearing more of chaos and confusion in, among the churches and in the churches 
because the Holy Spirit is not a one operating because it's not a spirit it's not a spirit of confusion he's not an author of confusion it got to be another spirit are you listening so the, which, it's, it's very important beloved that we test all spirits to know which spirit is operating I, I, I don't know, but I, I have decided that I'm, I am going to test whatever spirit is operating and be there or not to be there. Because by the end of the day, I mean, I'm telling you, it's very important for me. These are some of the things that I have come to realize in my 20-something years in ministry. That you, you, know, you, you, haven't, you haven't come to know enough. You think you know, or you 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 may have probably you know studied something, and you have you know, but you you don't know enough, because the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus promised that when He comes, He will lead us and teach us and and tell us, lead us into all truth. And so you are constantly learning new things, learning things that only the Holy Spirit can reveal them to you, because Scripture says that He alone knows the things of God. And even the deep things of God. Are you listening? And so if he, the Holy Spirit, knows the deep things of God, then who is to reveal the deep things of God to you? The Holy Spirit. So you must, it's, it's, it's very essential and important in the life of, um, of uh, you, the Christian, to know that. You know, I told you a couple of weeks ago, a guy came and, you know, called me and he, want, he wanted to know how can he receive the Holy Spirit. And after talking to him and all that, I realized that, well, this guy is a Muslim. A Muslim, but he's attracted to the Holy Spirit. All right? You've got to... Now, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is, is I mean, like I said, the sun, look, at, look at the sorcerer. It, it's no surprising that even the sorcerer was attracted to... The, because the Holy Spirit gives you power. He gives you power, authority. He gives you that power. gives you authority. And you, you get that by surrendering and inviting Jesus, making Jesus your Lord and Savior. That's number one. Are you listening? And so it's, we need to understand this. And if you are a Christian, and then, beloved, you must understand that you, your source of authority is with the Holy Spirit now. Because in this dispensation, we have crossed that old already. In this dispensation, you know, your 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 understanding of the grace your understanding of grace your understanding of spiritual things will come by the spirit the holy spirit the holy spirit can is the one who will help you to understand spiritual things are you listening you cannot understand spiritual things beloved without the holy spirit you cannot understand the spiritual things just by the flesh it doesn't work and would not work the spirit leads to the spirit, the flesh to the flesh. All right? Maslin, God bless you. Are you listening? So this is very important for you to understand. With, without, listen, I, I am telling you this, and you can check with your pastor or your leaders if they understand the importance of the Holy Spirit in your life as a believer. Without the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, it's going to be a challenge. Now, the Holy Spirit will also open doors. I mean, He does things, not only just for you to be having some goosebumps on you on Sundays when, you know, He, he shows up in, in the, you know, the atmosphere is charged and that kind of stuff. No, I am talking about your daily life and living. The Holy Spirit must be with you, in you. Because Jesus said that, that when the Holy Spirit is come, He will dwell with you and He will be in you forever. So, if the Holy Spirit is dwelling with you, then it is so important that you must find somebody, if, if you don't have the Holy Spirit yet, dwell or get closer to somebody who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Because out of, out of see the scripture says that out of the abundance of the, of the heart, the mouth speaks. I'm telling you, somebody who is filled with the Holy Spirit will be speaking and the Holy Spirit will even fall on you. We see that. We're going to look at, you know what? Just go with me now to the book of um, Acts chapter 10. We're going to study this scripture here today. And uh, it will bless you for you to see what I'm talking about. Okay? Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Um, now, this is after 
the, the, um, the apostles and um, disciples have received the Holy Spirit and Peter was out there doing it, you know, what his assignment is and other people are getting, you know, are doing the preaching the gospel and what have you. Now, um, chapter 10, we're talking, we'll go, we are going to be looking at a centurion or a Roman soldier, somebody who loves, loves God, listen to me, loves God, okay, a Gentile, not a Jew, loves God and do some good deeds. Now, what happened here is that this man encountered the angel of God and requested that he sends for Peter, who is now filled with the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Oh, I'm telling you, the time is coming soon and very soon that men and women will be sending for you because they know that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. They, they, I mean, because, you see, Bible tells us that the world does not know the Holy Spirit and the world is looking for something. And the answers are with the Holy Spirit who is with us now. But they don't know the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer that you, a child of God, will come to the realization of the importance of the Holy Spirit and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that He will dwell with you and be in you. That when you are sent to whether it's a family meeting, whatever it may be, you go in the authority and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. All right, let's let's read from um, chapter 10 of Acts. There was a man, there was a certain man in uh, Caesarea called Cornelius, Cornelius, a man called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. Okay? Now, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household. He feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. I mean, he did some, some good, de good deeds. He did some good things. Charitable stuff. Now, about the ninth, verse 3, about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. It's come up as a memorial before God. Now, look at verse 5. Now, he says, send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose name or surname is Peter. All right, send for him. Now, he is, is staying with Simon the Turner. He's staying with a Simon called Turner, whose, name, whose house is by the sea. Okay, he will tell you what you must do. Send for Simon Peter and uh, he will tell you what you should do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his, of, uh, his household servants and uh, a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on a housetop to pray about a sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat and while they made ready he fell into a trance and he saw the heavens open and an object like a, a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and led down to the earth in it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth wild beasts creeping things birds of the air and the voice said rise peter Kill and eat. Kill and eat. Now, you know that the, the Jews are very particular based on the old dispensation and the old instructions concerning the things that they have to eat and not to eat. Um, what we call kosher. They got to eat some kosher stuff. Are you listening to me? So here, Peter is responding 
to the angel of, um, of God that no, I am nothing of such has entered my mouth before and I am not supposed to be eating anything that is unclean. That's unclean. Especially these four-footed animals. You're unclean. Now, the angel said to Peter, okay, Peter said to her, not Lord, I, uh, and the angel, the voice said to Peter again, what God has cleansed, you must not call on uh, common. Whatever God has cleansed and made it good, you don't need and you don't have to call unclean. What God has called clean, what God has made clean, you don't call those things unclean. Are you listening? You don't call those things common. Now, this was done three times and the object that was taken up into heaven again. This object was taken up. Now, while Peter wondered within himself what what kind of uh, vision this was, then the man that Cornelius had sent, all right, to Joppa, to Peter, to call Peter, they were knocking at the door. So, while Peter was, was uh, look at verse 19, so while Peter thought about a vision, the Spirit of God that was on him said to him, Peter, behold, three men are seeking for you, the Spirit of God. Peter I mean, these guys were behind the door waiting, coming to see Peter. And the Spirit already told Peter, before Peter, they knocked, they had the door knocked and, you know, whoever is there and that kind of stuff. The Spirit had already spoken to Peter. That Peter, there are, there are these guys here looking for you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. Then verse 21, Peter went down to to the man who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man and all the holy man, da, 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 all those good stuff about Cornelius, has sent us to come and summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Cornelius wants to hear some words from you. Verse 23, then he invited them in. Peter invited this man in. And on the next day, he stayed with them. On the next day, they went and departed to go to see Cornelius. Now, the scripture tells us that when um, Cornelius, the next day, Cornelius saw Peter coming with um, the messengers that he, Cornelius, sent to them and all that. He bowed you know, to worship um, Peter. And Peter lifted him up. He says, no, no, no. Hey, don't even try to do that. Don't even try to do that. Now, I can imagine some, you know, this day and age, people, somebody filled with the Holy Spirit who don't think that the Holy Spirit has come upon you so you can you can be a blessing to people who have been saying, hey, please kiss my, my, my ring and all that kind of nonsense. <laughs> Peter says, hey, no, 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 get up, get up, get up, get up. Now, watch this. See, look at, look at Peter, a fisherman, somebody who has not been to school. He's not educated. And looking at a centurion, I mean, a, a centurion is somebody like, like an army, army commander, okay, who has, who is the head of a regiment. He has military people left, right, center, who are, you know, at his, at his disposal anytime. And the guy who's educated and learned and all that, he is bowing to Peter. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is in Peter. Glory be to God. Are you listening? He is bowing to Peter. And, uh, and verse, look at verse 26. Peter lifted him up and saying, Stand up. I myself, I'm also a man. <laughs> I am also a man. Stand up. Please, don't, don't bow to me. Don't do that. Okay, now, oh, I tell you, I, I'm just excited about the Holy Spirit. The more on daily basis I think of, of Him and, and think of the, His attributes and His work and who He is, I get more, I mean, I get more excited that Jesus indeed loves me so much that He didn't leave me alone, but sent the Holy Spirit to dwell with me and to be in me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Look at verse um, 29. Therefore I came without objection as soon as 
I was sent for you. I asked, then what reason have you sent for me? Peter is asking now, uh, Cornelius, what have you sent for? I mean, why did you send for me? What do you want me to do? And Cornelius said, if I study, Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in a bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your arms or your charitable deeds are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call Simon here, whose name is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Peter, the, uh, uh, Simon the Tanner, by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and uh, you have done well to come. Now therefore, we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. Cornelius um, have invited some of his friends, I believe some of the military friends and other, other people from his family and all that, and they are all ready for Peter. So now, Peter, this is your platform. This is what we want. To, I mean, we want to hear. I don't know what God has put in you. The, the angel told me, told me to send for you. When you come, you will speak to us. I am a man under authority. But I fear God. I revert God. I, I reverence Him. Not I'm scared, but I reverence Him. Because I love Him. And um, He has heard my prayers. He has seen my charitable deeds. And um, have... Uh, asked that I sent for you and that when you come you will speak so now we want to hear you verse 34 then Peter opened his mouth and said in truth I perceive that God shows no partiality but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him the word which God sent to me sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. With the Holy Spirit who empowers you, you are then therefore able to cast out demons and uh, heal all those who are oppressed of the devil. And Scripture says, for this is what Jesus did, did, for God was with him. Verse 39. And we are all witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up. On the third day and showed him openly not to all the people but to witness to witnesses chosen before by God even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead this is Peter testifying of Jesus Peter talking about Jesus. We're going to see something powerful here. Peter is talking about Jesus. This is, this is the message that Cornelius want to hear by the angel. Ah. Verse 42, And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he Jesus, who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead, to whom all the prophets witness 
through his name, whoever believes in him will receive forgiveness of sin. To him all the prophets witness, all, not some, all the prophet witness. That through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin or forgiveness of sin. Watch this. Watch this, beloved, watch this. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Ah! Now, Peter didn't even pray or lay hands on them. Whilst he was just talking about Jesus, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Glory be to God. <laughs> Beloved, because the Holy Spirit is in Peter and now is manifesting himself in an atmosphere of expectancy. These people are expecting to see, I mean, they're expecting that what they have heard in Jerusalem, which, what took place over there, and, and, and Peter is, is one of them because Peter was the, the one who was also bold to stand and address the people. Peter, we want to hear from you. Beloved, I believe the time is close that um, the people of God filled with the Holy Spirit are going to be called. Because see, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are no longer in an atmosphere of fear. You, you don't live in fear. It don't matter. It does not matter. It does not. Beloved, I have come to that place. That is why I am so, so, so strong in telling you this. You, it doesn't matter. Fear is no, fear is gone. Because you see, when the light comes, darkness leaves town. Darkness leaves. I mean, you don't need to pray against darkness. Darkness will flee, will leave. Are you listening to me? I mean, it's, it's up to you to, to get this. My job is to bring it, the word of truth to you. But beloved, darkness has no place. When light comes, darkness has no place. Whoa, I love this. While Peter was just talking, speaking, these things testifying of Jesus and the, his, the witnesses of the prophets concerning Jesus and all that. And he, Peter, is one of the people who ate and drank with him and saw all that Jesus did. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word. Hmm. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. <laughs> now, <laughs> Peter came with some people who are Jews. Okay, if you look, if you look, read this thing carefully, you realize that they were surprised, they were astonished. Now, wait a minute, Peter, you've come to a place of the Gentiles. Now, this Cornelius was a Gentile. All right, he and his household. And I believe everybody around there at that time. But you, Peter, came with um, some guys from um, Simon the Tanner's house to speak to Cornelius and his household. And whilst Peter was talking to them, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, my goodness. He fell upon them. Watch this. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. They were 
astonished. He said, whoa, as many as came with Peter. Because the spirit, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had poured, had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Watch this now. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered. The reason why they were astonished is that they heard these people speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit fell upon them. Glory be to God. And they started speaking in tongues. Beloved, I'm telling you, that is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon them. Whilst Peter was... So you see, when I'm saying that, listen, when Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will dwell with you and be in you. You know what that means? When the Holy Spirit is with you, he, wherever you go, the Holy Spirit is with you. People can look at you and see there's something. There's something, there's something about you. Have you heard that before? <laughs> oh yeah, I have. There's something about you. I, I don't know what it is. Oh yeah, they do know. Especially those demons, they know. There's something about you. There's something about you. Peter opened his mouth, just telling them about Jesus and, and how, you know, God, God anointed him, you know, to, you know, and, and he did all that, that he did. Bible says that the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they began to speak in tongues. These are Gentiles. Because see, God is now in this new covenant pouring his spirit upon all flesh. In this new dispensation, listen, the anointing is not only in the pulpits. Are you listening to me? Position yourself for the Holy Spirit to take over. Position yourself, beloved, whoever you are listening to me. Position yourself to, for the Holy Spirit to take over you, to dwell with you and live in you. The anointing is no longer in the pulpit or just the selected, as in the days of old. No. Remember God said in the last day, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Yeah, we are in the last days, but of course, as to when Jesus will appear in the clouds of glory, he himself, the Bible says he himself don't even know. It is known to the Father alone, but just watch and pray. Just be ready. Just be ready. Just be ready. Don't let his appearance take you by surprise. Just be ready. In season and out of season. Just be ready, beloved. Just be ready. Receive the Holy Spirit. Beloved, look how look at how how eager people were anxious. To receive oh my goodness I I I I, I, I see my, my 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 spirit in that atmosphere I'm telling you it's I mean it's exciting it's exciting oh my goodness watch this now verse the Holy Spirit came upon them and uh, the and, and the those who believe were astonished as many as um, were, were with Peter and um, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered and said, Oh boy, here you go, Peter again, my man. <laughs> Listen to this. Can anyone forbid water? Can anyone forbid water that these should these people should not be baptized? Who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Can anyone stop these people? Why? Because they, they are Gentiles. Can, can anyone stop them? Can, in fact, he, he, he used this narrative of, saying, of asking, can anybody stop water? Can anybody stop water? <laughs> Beloved, if you think there is no God, look at the ocean. That's a question right there. Can anybody stop water? And yet, 
There's a boundary for the water, for the ocean not to even cross. God says you don't cross this, this boundary. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, can, can anybody stop water? All right, can you stop the water? In other words, the Holy Spirit has fallen on, on, has fallen on these people also, the Gentiles. How are you going to stop them? And we're going to see, what time is it? We're going to see that, uh, you know, Peter, after this, have to defend his ministry to the people who thought that uh, they are the only people who are supposed to receive, you know, all that God has. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Beloved, we are living in the times, I am very, 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 very sure that soon and very soon, Things are going to turn. I'm telling you. I am telling you. Things are just going to turn. You will see that it is no longer. It is no longer about, what, you know, the pastors or the preachers or the prophets. He say he pour his spirit upon all flesh. Are you ready to receive the Holy Spirit? If you don't have the Holy Spirit as a believer, you are not authorized. <laughs> I am telling you, you, you are not authorized. Because see, as a child, as a believer, as a Christian, you are also, you know, mandated by the Holy Spirit to heal the sick. Healing the sick or raising the dead is not only for the preachers. Is for everybody who have received Jesus as his Lord and Savior and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because see, the Holy Spirit will let you do things, can will let you do things that ordinarily you cannot do. Ordinarily you cannot do. The Holy Spirit will, will, will so empower you that first of all, you you become you become not an just an ordinary person anymore no you 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 are not you are not an ordinary person anymore if you are if you are if you are raising the dead and healing the sick and you know casting out demons and all that does that make you an ordinary person see that's why they saw jesus as who who is he who is he the holy spirit makes all the difference are you listening so now let's see what Jesus, what, what <laughs> Peter, Peter was saying. Can anyone, now Peter answered and said, when, can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? And uh, Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Then Peter asked them to be baptized. You know to, to be baptized everybody you got to be baptized whether you are you are a soldier you are you are you are a gentile be baptized now be baptized be baptized be baptized in the name of the lord now yesterday i, I spoke to you about the fact that john baptized with water for repentance you be baptized in the name of the lord for the holy spirit in the name of Jesus for the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Are you listening? So Peter is telling them, you got to be baptized. The Holy Spirit has fallen. I mean, why is he was talking to them? Look at this impartation. Look at this impartation. Beloved, Get you got to get close to a spirit filled, the Holy Spirit filled with the person. If you are not spirit, if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit yet, but it's for everybody. He's, he, he's for everybody. It's a, he, he, he's come as a gift. This is the, listen, the Holy Spirit represents Jesus. Jesus was the best gift. So if Jesus was the best gift and the Holy Spirit is in Jesus, then you know that the Holy Spirit is the best gift God has given to man. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Are you getting this revelation here? The Holy Spirit is the best God has. Man, I'm telling you, I mean, hmm. Ah, 
it's 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 exciting. It's really exciting. I get I'm you know I guess you can see from my face. I get excited when I'm talking about the Holy Spirit because he he you know see I'm I, I'm a I'm a practical kind of person. I like to be myself. I don't you know this trying to be somebody and all those things. No, it's either you like me or you don't like me. That's your business. <laughs> I'm not going around thinking who like me or who's talking about me anymore. Gone are those days, man. I, didn't, I don't care. No. I I I, I have the Holy Spirit. I, you know, I, I was sharing with Joyce. I said, babe, you know, I don't think you should worry yourself about, you know, who's our friend and who's not and all that. We got the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. We got the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? We got the Holy Spirit. I mean, we excited. I mean, look at me sitting here by myself just talking to you about Holy Spirit. I'm excited. I'm, I'm telling you. I am just excited about the Holy Spirit and who God has sent, you know, to me. And beloved, you need the Holy Spirit. Whilst Peter was talking to them about the one who was, who was, 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 was um, full of the Holy Spirit, Jesus. Remember what, look at, look at verse 38. Okay, we're in Acts chapter 10. Look at verse 38. And how God anointed Jesus of Christ, Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Peter was talking about Jesus who was full of the Holy Spirit and did all the things that, that uh, you know, was people were marveled and, and all that. And he says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. The Holy Spirit empowers you. Remember, I told you that Jesus told the disciples, wait until the Holy Spirit has come upon you and then you shall receive power to do or to preach the gospel. So the Holy Spirit empowers. And so this is what I said beginning, a Christian without the Holy Spirit, you are not empowered to do the things that you, you, you're supposed to do. A Christian without the Holy Spirit, you are not empowered. No. No. You are not empowered. Okay. You can't go. Let me put it this way. Let me give you an illustration. Perfect one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are a Christian. Good. Flip the, the coin. You are a citizen of a country. Good. What will empower you for you to travel to another country? What empowers you? The country's passport. You just can't say, I am a citizen of, of um, United States and, or, or uh, any other country and therefore you pick you because you have money to pay. Watch this. <laughs> you have money to buy your air ticket and uh, you want to go to Africa and without a passport, you just buy your air ticket. Yeah, you can buy your air ticket without a passport, but you ain't going to be flying out of that country to another country without that which empowers you to travel. Are you getting the revelation here? So yes, you are Christian. God, praise God for that. But what empowers you to, to, to have the difference? Because you see, when you have that empowerment, that passport for you to travel, not everybody is doing the same thing. The difference between you then and the other same citizen who does not have the passport to travel is the fact that you can go, they cannot go. So yes, we are you are we are all Christians, but what is what gives you that empowerment? See, that is why Jesus was very very strict um, concerning um, the, the 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 disciples. He says, "No, don't don't attempt to go. Wait until you have been empowered by the Holy Spirit, beloved." The, the, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is so essential. I don't know what other messages are you listening to? What other, other teachings or, or preachings are you listening to? Without the Holy Spirit, no. No, you can't. You, you can't. 
So you need the Holy Spirit. So we see that when the Holy Spirit has come upon these people, now what? What's the listen? Listen. The Bible says that Cornelius was a God-fearing man. He fasts, he prays, he he gives alms or charity, he does char charitable deeds. But was that enough? Was that enough? No. No. His, 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 his love for God caused heaven to send an angel to him that, listen, Peter, the one who is filled with the Holy Spirit, because you need that impartation, okay? Yes, you need that impartation. You love God and all that, but you need that impartation of the Holy Spirit. And you need somebody who is filled with that closer to you so that you can receive that. Are you getting this revelation yet? It's just not enough to say that I am a Christian. It's not enough. It's not enough. You need to be empowered. You need to be possessed. I mean, this is what I said for myself. The Holy Spirit possessed me. You need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And for you to do that, First, you must receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You must receive Him as your Lord and Savior. And uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Are you that person I'm talking to today? You, prob you probably, you know, passing through the, um, the social media today, the Facebook, and you saw, you know, this person talking about something that was caught your interest. And uh, you wanted to listen to it. Well, it's no, it's no accident. It's not a mistake that you've stayed and to listen because today is your day of salvation. Today is your day of salvation. Today is your day to have an encounter with Jesus and make him your Lord and personal Savior. If you are that person, wherever you are, wherever you are. My, my assignment, beloved, is to preach and teach after that i leave the rest of the work for the holy spirit to do his work i i cannot do the work of the holy spirit i cannot force you to receive jesus as your lord and savior neither can i force you to receive the baptism of the holy spirit after i leave this broadcast i go to my personal duties and personal activities of the day are you listening and i just trust that the holy spirit you will give the Holy Spirit opportunity to come into your life. You, you will receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So today is your day of salvation. And if you want to receive him right now, like I told this young man, he hasn't gotten back to me. I said, listen, you must receive Jesus. Make him your Lord and Savior. Because, beloved, God will not judge you because of your sins. God will judge you because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, because he has given him as a ransom for what we could not obey. And that brought his curse on us because of the covenant, the first covenant that we couldn't handle. Jesus says, in his blood is the new covenant. A new covenant is established between man and God. But this is the key. Whosoever believe, whosoever believe, you will therefore not perish but have everlasting life. So it's open. It's open for, it's open to, you see that even the Gentiles in this day of Peter with Cornelius, they even receive it. They were, it's, it's open. But it's your willingness to receive. It's your willingness to, are you ready to receive Jesus? To make him your Lord and Savior. If it is right now, I don't know where you are. You can just give me, um, you know, a like, a thumbs up or something. Let me know that, yes, you have. But the most important thing is what I'm about to do with you right now. And that is to pray for you and lead you for you to receive the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To receive Jesus. Are you listening? So pray, let's, let, let's pray right now if you are that person. And please don't, don't try to think about 
what people are going to say and and all that are you do are you going when when you die right now you are not going in that grave with people you are going by yourself and the scripture tells you if you don't know that that it is appointed for man to die once after death after death judgment there's somebody who's going to judge you ask you did you receive my son or you 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 neglected him or did you despise him that is where it is going to be it's not about all the sins jesus has 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 died for everybody but to them that believe and receive him that's where the difference is let me pray with you right now so give your life to jesus and receive the baptism of the holy spirit pray say lord jesus i thank you for hearing this message i am convinced looking at myself that i'm a sinner i thank you for coming to die for me and to share your blood to wipe out my sins now i receive you as my lord and my savior come into my life take control of me and be the lord of my soul i thank you write my name in your book that when you have come to take your saints i will be among them now also baptize me i want to receive the baptism of the holy spirit so that i shall walk with you i will walk with you with understanding in the name of jesus I pray amen if you pray that prayer by faith right now not doubting or say so oh, oh, pastor I didn't feel anything is this yes beloved it's that simple it's not about somebody you know um, um, making any big deal hey Nana Sewa <laughs> it's not somebody you know pushing you or knocking you on your head that you must receive Jesus or you must know now you must receive him because you believe in him and all that he has done are you listening i am telling you you will see things change you will see things change beloved i have realized that it's not how long you have stayed in church the difference is, is your understanding it's your understanding it's your understanding well listen and if you don't have um, um, a place you call your home church you need one all right get to the place where um, you can grow you can grow with the Word of God you can increase and all that all right very very important very very important and um, get to that place the church and tell everybody tell the leadership you've given your life to Jesus you're born again and uh, you want to grow okay you want to grow because they will, you have to take the baby steps into getting into that place of maturity in your in your spiritual and Christian walk with God well in the meantime I want you to uh, do me a favor share this broadcast to all your loved ones and um, bless them as well okay be a blessing to them they will they will thank you for it and let me end here again a Christian without the Holy Spirit you are not empowered and you are not powerful you are Christian yes without the Holy Spirit you are not empowered and you are not powerful and so if you want to be a powerful Christian okay a powerful Christian you must receive the Holy Spirit you must receive the Holy Spirit anybody who tells you yeah yeah you're okay you are you don't need the Holy Spirit you are tell run away from that person just run flee Bible said flee are you listening flee don't even stay there they 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 with another gospel they are with another gospel run and so if you are a Christian 
then you must receive the Holy Spirit. A Christian without the Holy Spirit is like a car without gas or petrol. Are you listening? You cannot go far. You can't. Until I come your, your way same time tomorrow, please share with your friends. Let me hear from you. Go to the website of this ministry, www.patrickquenoministries.com. All right? Be a financial blessing. Like I said, we are raising uh, money to buy this uh, um, uh, media broadcast equipment. All right? It's cost, costing about $12,000. Uh, that's what we need. If you want to write a check for the whole thing, God bless you. That'll be wonderful. Um, or if you want to show whichever amount, it will be a blessing. So go to that side. You see the button says, it will says donate. Click on it. You want to donate through your with your credit card, or you want to donate uh, through a PayPal, or you want to send a cash app. You can use this number, plus one. If you outside the United States, one plus one nine one four five seven two. 9816 okay or if you are in in america it's easy you know you know how, how to go about it all right use your cash up with this number it will bless you you'll be blessed you'll be blessed let me emphasize that you don't you are not given so so that god will bless you don't have that mindset you are giving to god or in supporting the things of god because you love god you love God. You can't bribe God to bless you. No, you can't. All right? We, 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 gone, we used to think like that. You can't bribe God to bless you. Okay? Scripture says, Give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Give and it shall be given to you. Well, listen, you were not given to God when God so loved the world that he gave. You were not given to God. He first, you love him because he first loved you. That's what scripture says. And it's true. For God so loved the world that he gave. So when you are giving to God, please don't get this, you know, this wrong teachings that uh, you are giving, you know, so that you can receive. Well, it's a, we have that. We have spiritual principles. Okay. We have spiritual principles. If you want to take that spiritual, which anybody else can do that. But as a child of God, that you love God. You give to God because you love him. Because you love him. This is where I draw the curtain for the day. May God be with you. May he continue to smile upon you. And um, most importantly, invite the Holy Spirit. Let him dwell with you and be in you. Same time tomorrow. Want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith. In God and in all thy getting, get understanding.